Hello everybody, Duckyworth here and it is time for my next live film reaction. It has been a while since I've recorded my last one of these but I feel that it is now time to move on to my next live reaction that I have scheduled on my list at the moment. I've made a whole list of uh, films that I hope to uh, do uh, live reactions to. Um, this year and for my next one is going to be one that I've been looking forward to watching for quite some time now and it is the 2007 Disney film Meet the Robinsons. Now, this film originally came out when when it came out I was like around about uh, 13 uh, when it when it first came out in cinemas and I remember that when I first heard of it I wasn't really that interested um, in this when it came out to be honest. Um, the last Disney film that I'd seen at the, fi at the cinemas uh, before this one was uh, Chicken Little, unfortunately. So not a very good, uh, so not a very good sign uh, there to try and base uh, Disney films off of how Chicken Little turned out. And the year before this film, The Wilds ended up coming out. So a bit of a, a double whammy of a lackluster Disney films there that really did not uh I mean even when I was younger it's when I was younger it's like it didn't really catch my interest that much but going into it again like uh many years later when I started checking out on uh, Disney films that I hadn't seen uh over the years this is one that I I don't remember too much about it but I do remember really enjoying it when um whenever I saw it uh, next and it does seem to be one that a lot of people that watch me have been interested in seeing my uh, reactions to it because it does seem to be one that a lot of people seem to enjoy and find it to be a bit of a a bit of a cult classic or a underappreciated uh, Disney film uh, when compared to uh, even some of the others that came out around the time like a uh, Bolt and Princess and the Frog and the like when it's uh, around about uh, like the mid to late two thousands. So I've got it on Disney Plus right now and I'm about to um, click play here. Join a brilliant young inventor named Lewis as he sets out off on a time traveling journey to find a family he never knew living in the fantastical world of 2037. Oh, so in like uh, 15 years, this is what uh, the world's going to look like, I imagine. <laughs> so here we go, everyone. Three, two, one, play. Okay, so just while I'm uh, waiting up for um, the film to get past the opening uh, titles, let's uh, look at some trivia for the film. Okay, while well reviewed, it couldn't even break even on its uh, on its uh, budget, and. Um, in Japan, it's called Meet Lewis and Future Thief. Uh, and that's a bit of a strange title there. Uh, when Disney brought Pixar and John Lasseter took charge of Walt Disney and feature animation as well, about a third of the movie was redone to improve on the story. However, the old guard almost revolted at it and openly expressed to the press that they hoped the film would bomb. Oh, that's, a, that's harsh. Okay, so here we are, just opening up at the um, orphanage here. And there's a Sixth Street orphanage. And there's a Mother Gothel there, uh, dropping off um, <laughs> dropping off Lewis. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> I don't know why I thought of Mother Gothel just the first time. Maybe, maybe it's for Hood. <laughs> but one thing that I do give this film... Um, this almost sounds a bit like Danny Elfman music. Uh, listen to it here. Uh, one thing I do give this film credit for, from what I can remember, um, it does seem to hold a bit of... It does seem to paint orphanages in a bit, in a bit of a more... in a more positive light than um unfortunately is common okay and there's a 
Lewis there, who looks a bit like a dash if he uh, dash par if he had uh, grown his uh, hair out and went into science. Oh wow, that that kid it, on the left. That is because I I don't often get a lot of when I was younger. I didn't I didn't sleep very much. I didn't get a lot of sleep. His the bags under his eyes look at look a lot like me. Oof. Oh, so, uh, actually, you know what? Looking at what Lewis looks like, he looks a bit like, um, he's got more pointy hair, more pointed hair version of, uh, the master from a brave little toaster. Oh, and how fitting, he even put a toaster, um, on top of that. <laughs> Goob. Whenever I hear his, whenever I hear that, I just think about him um, SpongeBob, and I just imagine that a uh, Lewis, Lewis and Goob want to um want to go to Goofy Goobers. I do, I do like a uh, Mildred's uh, character as well. Like she's much more supportive than uh, some orphanage, uh, or orphanage uh, runners. Yeah, when it comes to the animation, I mean, I can, I can tell it's a, a bit, um, a bit dated, like some of the, some of the models. Oh, these people are not very nice. I can already tell. It's like he's interested in inventions, and immediately, and immediately they say, "What kind of sport do you like?" That's like me when I was when I was growing up. Everyone else seemed to, to push for sports, but I wasn't a very sporty uh, kid. And it wasn't until like a uh, years and years later that I started uh, getting into like a bowling. I'm like, It looks a bit like a Jimmy Neutron in a spot. Some of the, uh, oh, um, I think he could have said that um, earlier. The moment he talked about peanuts, rather than just be giving him a silent treatment. Uh. Yeah. What jerks? <sighs> yeah, what's wrong with it? Is it's, this is the thing, Lewis? He's not a difficult boy. He's just a. Uh, he just he just jumps. At, he just he just seems to be so eager to please them. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's just it's just sad that he's just so so eager, but um, no one seems to want to give him a chance. Ouch. Ah. Uh. Oh, just. Just listen to Lu look at Luna from a hell of a boss. It took her a long time to get adopted. Ah, oh, ouch. Uh. 
Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. It's like a wither the mom at the start. Uh, if I remember, uh, we never see we never see her, do we? I don't think. Uh, I don't think it will be that easy, uh, Lewis. Daniel Hansen. I'm just been looking up a. Uh... Oh, that was a bit of a weird uh, zoom there. Oh, and it's it's also that um. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, wait, wait, wait. I just had a thought earlier. Wasn't was that an, was that one of the teachers just sitting down? At a, um, ugh. Wow, he's a very <laughs> he's a very tough kid to be able to um to focus on um apprenticeship with Inventco. <laughs> Oh, goobs just uh, staying up all day, uh, just while he puts up with a uh, Lewis's um, inventing there. But it seems to be he's focusing so much on uh, that invention that he's uh, ignoring like um, a lot of uh, the potential people who want to. Uh... Wait, why? One of them is wearing like a Jason mask, a Jason Voorhees mask there. Wait, he had a laser like that? <laughs> oh, it's like he's getting so caught up in it, he's not even paying attention to what goobs are goob ones. Yeah, that, that's me. That, that's, that's me. Uh, goob is me when I was younger. <laughs> who's, the, who's the kid who voiced a uh, goob? Matthew Matthew Joston. I don't recognise that name. Oof. Oh, he's just getting, getting so fed up with all the rejection that he's not even... F the theme of this, it's like they, they have a lot of the... um. You need to stop focusing on the past and look to the future. It's kind of like a Dr. Crunklehorn. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Why does she remind me of Dory from Finding Nemo? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, <no. laughs> Once again, that reminds me of uh, Jimmy Neutron with that one episode with a patch that makes them all sick. Sort of. Oh, did his pecs just flex?
Uh, the classic, the vault that... Uh, <laughs> anyone seen that episode of Recess? When um, every single person made... Um, every single person made um, a volcano for a... Uh, for the science fair, and at the end, all of them end up exploding. Uh, Alright, who's, who's the slick? Now, speaking of Jimmy Neutron, he looks like a black haired Jimmy Neutron there. Ah. Hello, Wednesday. Wednesday Atoms. <laughs> Oh, uh, wow, that gym coach has got very short shorts. <laughs> Who like short shorts? Uh, you got to be careful wearing those budgie smugglers when you're around uh, a bunch of children. Uh. Uh, oh, I remember. I remember the tall, the, the, tall mat, the bowler hat guy. <laughs> Uh, that's I do really Wilbur Robinson Time Continuum Task Force Because yeah, like some of like uh, the expressions that other uh, characters have, and like some of the uh, and some of the movements, they do seem a little, a little bit um, a little bit stiff compared to some of like uh, the later ones that came out after like, oh dear, like came out after like a uh, two thousand two thousand nine. <laughs> oh, that guys, we've got some very small eyes. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, hello, dastardly whiplash. Nice uh, moustache you've got there. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's even got the chin of Dick Dastardly. <laughs> oh, wow, it's uh, the thing if it was uh, a bowler hat. All right. I like the design for the the science teacher uh, there. It reminds me a bit. It reminds me a little bit of a. It reminds me a bit of a more uh, agreeable version of um, that one teacher from The Incredibles that yelled a uh, coincidence. I think not. <laughs> All the time. Yes. <laughs> Wait, who who voiced her anyway? Uh, the teacher, Doctor. Laurie Metcalf. I like her, the coach, by the way. I like the subversion with that there. Um, it's like it's like he actually does care. Yeah, does actually care a lot about science, and he's not a complete dummy. You like um, a lot of the uh, PE teachers in uh, media. My kids, my kids are still doing laps. <laughs> wow, he's got Jerry's... He's got the same fingers as Jerry from Jerry's game. <laughs> ah, runaway propeller. Wow, that, either those are very... Either those are very strong... Uh, 
A very strong propeller versus a very weak light. Wow, this is this is the second Disney film that came out in like three years that had um, a, a dramatic scene, a dramatic scene with um, uh, Jim and uh, sp and sprinklers. Yeah, so that that model of uh, some of that, it looks a bit uh, looks a little bit like not as well rendered as some of the. I mean, I'm I'm just, I'm just saying like the animation. I'm just saying uh, it's still good. It's still really good animation. It's just dated a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm just teeth. God, look at his posture. <laughs> Is that going to be me in a couple of years? In like a couple of decades, I mean. Uh, the film started under the guidance of Michael Eisner and David Stanton. They were both kicked out and replaced by John Lasseter, who asked for a reworking of about 60% of the film, hence why its release was held back a year. Oof. I do like the music in this film, like how it hand how it captures the uh, the emotional bits here. Wait, what did that say on the wall? Uh, Zachariah and Sarah and Jack. Oh no, he's turned into Pigeon Man from uh, Hey Arnold. And looks like Wallace has been doing uh, noughts and crosses there. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> what's it? What's it? A it looks like he has a bu uh, Buzz Lightyear t-shirt or something. Wait, what? What was that? Uh, that, that model on uh, the Tanning Salon coupon has got very, doesn't have any guts. Um, she's got a very thin torso. Gave me, but gave me bad uh, flashbacks to her, that inner workings uh, character, character models. <laughs> <laughs> How quickly this game in there. Something something about uh something about Lewis's uh not Lewis. Uh the other kid. Uh his uh, his voice acting. It reminds me it reminds me a bit of um He reminds me a little bit of um King Bob from a uh, recess, like uh has a similar voice and uh, <laughs> a similar voice to him. That's a cool little time machine that he's got there. And another thing, another thing I really like about this film, it, like when it does like all the future, like a uh, all the future, like a uh, technology, how it uses bubbles, so like uh, the the bubble uh, aesthetic, like a lot of the uh, futuristic uh, buildings have. Everything looks very round and very and very bubbly. Insta building. 
That's that's a cool um, but that's a creative idea there. The way that they have that, like the building just today land instead of tomorrow land. And I do, and I do like this. Uh, yeah, I like this concept here. That's a, that's a cool uh, creative idea there. Like the way how we do like the traveling here, just with a. Hopefully, none of them pop before they make it to a. Uh... Actually, that reminds me a bit of a Futurama, like uh, some of the ways that they go from when you see them going through all the, all the tubes in the opening uh, credits in those. So this is supposed to be twenty thirty seven. So by the time I'm um forty forty two, we should have um. We should have time travel going on. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> Actually, that looks a, that looks a little bit weird. The way that the smoke like uh, follows the follows the time machine there, wouldn't it have uh, stayed around more if it, if uh, the time machine was flying down instead of just like uh, keeping equidistant away from uh, the machine as it falls down? Yeah, some of the some of the smoke effects look a little bit uh meh. Actually this looks this reminds me a lot of uh, robots. Um, some of the designs of the, uh, that's another film I really need to see at some point, because that's, that's a film that I remember liking when I was growing up, that's a, that's a pretty funny one, Inventco, oh yeah, there he goes, <laughs> god, look at this, <laughs> who vo voiced, Ethan, S Stephen Anderson, Oh, and he voiced her grandpa Bud and cousin Tallulah. How does he just how does he just walk around without anyone just like or constantly staring at him? Just, just look at him and his clothes. Oh yeah. Oh wow, nice uh Is he a brony? <laughs> look at that uh look at that uh notebook there. God, look look at the size of his chin compared to his neck. <laughs> God, look at look at his legs. They're even skinnier than mine. 
Another, another thing I really like about this is like um when it comes when it comes to a uh, like of uh, interactions. Uh, well, you never know. He could be trans. Wait, <laughs> uh, right, the subtitles just say ah. Uh, those two guys at the back of exactly the same model. Those two were uh, those two men. Uh, uh, no, every single person. At the executive's table, looks uh, as except from except from that guy. <laughs> Say calm, sign a contract. <laughs> Where the, the bobble hat just like constantly rushes along like that. <laughs> the, the walks a running cycle, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it reminds me a lot of that professor guy from uh, Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> he has a lot of the same mannerisms. Oh, wow. Look, at, either he has very pointy feet or those are just very pointy shoes. <laughs> I like that egg timer. Flailing about when he runs. Ah, <laughs> oh, that is one very creepy face on that uh, egg time there. <laughs> oh no, Dr. Eggman without a moustache. Oh no, no. No, it looks a bit more like Kingpin. <laughs> I can tell that Steven Anderson had a lot of fun doing his voice. Get that... <laughs> Get that effing boy. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> you good point. Oh, wow, he's a very uh, bendy robot guy, isn't he? It looks like if C3PO got a uh, Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice uh, Carmen Miranda cosplay. Wait, so you don't you don't have any blonde? You don't have you don't have any blonde people in the future? <laughs> wow, nice, uh, nice, uh, hedges there. Nice garden features. Oh, gosh, it's the other father from, uh, Coraline. Wait, you, you just heads inside the pot. Oh, okay. Now we have Cthulhu. Yeah, 
Yeah, it, it reminds me a bit of a Ben from uh, Treasure Planet if he got uh, mixed together with a Fender from a robot. Wait, you have a bike? You can probably turn your legs into... Uh, what are the, what are the faces on those things? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just stole it from Scrat. Well, considering that he has a time machine and there was an actual time machine in an Ice Age uh, short at one point. Oh. Oh, that's true. Wilbur, that's it. Well, what was it? Ouch. Oh dear. Oh, is it going to be like Thanos when he says, uh, I don't feel so good, and then he just uh, disintegrates into ash? <laughs> Oh, look, that's a, that's a must be. You don't don't have eyes in the back of your head. You could just have your uh, okay, uh, 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 all right. <laughs> it looks like when SpongeBob uh, tried to, doing that April Fool's joke. Uh. It reminds me of a. It reminds me of Grandpa Phil. <laughs> oh no, it's Mort from Madagascar. No, <laughs> oh, I didn't take long. Oh, oh, ew! What was it? A smile? Ew. That was, that smiley had looked very uncanny, that one, that guy with a drill on his head. Uh. Pfft. Okay. Gaston, that was his name. No one slams into a pillar like Gaston. Oh. Oh, okay, if you say so. Oh, okay, now we have the... <laughs> a superhero who delivers pizza and treats it like a mission. <laughs> uh, okay, now we have a bird with a fez. Uh, oh, well, I think... Oh, oh, that's a pretty... That's... Oh, that's nice for one hedge that looks like a... Uh, okay, no. Uh, <laughs> wait, how did I procreate? How does how did he with a puppet procreate like that? <laughs> I want a bit, uh, one thing that, one thing that I do think about this film that does feel a little bit, uh, it feels a little bit, it was like, uh, uh, okay, uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, they are people. Uh, I, I think when I think when it comes to just like with all the characters, just like uh, in the family, there's here. It's just like they, they have like a uh, good ideas for like other uh, characters, and it does make lead into quite a few like a uh, creative concepts with it. But I just feel there's just like it does feel a bit difficult to keep track of uh, so many of them at times. Oh. Okay, now we have a lady with a. Uh, Singing frogs.
Oh, this this has got to be the girl from um, the start in uh, the science fair, isn't it? One where there's all the frogs there. Oh wow, he's got a lot of that one frog had a lot of gums. <laughs> ah, oh, oh oh no oh no it is it is it's a uh, grandpa's teeth. That's why the that's why it looked like that. Ew. Oh, and he... Okay, now he looks more normal. Oof. All right. Who? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. It, it, it does seem to be a bit... Because um, it's like you have a lot of characters to work with. And, um... I mean, I get that they're a big family, but it just seems to be a little, a little bit. I remember when I first saw this, I found it a little bit tricky to keep up with um, who they were. Okay, <laughs> okay, now back to bowler hat guy uh, getting his nose uh, stuck in a window. <laughs> why, why he just zooms in? Ah. Oh, that's his name, Mikey Agubian. Oh. oh, poor kid. Oh. Oh, I, do, I do like this, um... Oof. Oh, once again, going into the theme here of letting go in... Mo of uh, moving on with the future. Let the hate flow through. Oh yes, let the hate flow through you. <laughs> Goob. Oh dear, someone didn't like Frozen. <laughs> what, what? What's that? Are you holding up your holding up your cape like that? I do like that bit of a foreshadowing there with um. With uh, that that twist that comes later in related to a uh, goob there and how a uh, bowler hat guy started sympathising. Oh, wait, sorry, he's walking in. A uh, a stick. You found a stick. What are you going to do with a stick? <laughs> Sprout from. MLP a new generation, take notes. This is how you make a goofy bad guy and make him um, entertaining and not embarrassing and annoying in every single scene. Yeah, yeah, I much prefer Bowler Hat Guy over Sprout, in case you didn't notice. Oh, so it's just like uh, the Lion King. Uh, you can either, you can, 
you can't change the past, but you can either let it, uh, you can either run from it or face it head on. But, but it's, it's a bit, little bit like, uh, okay. It's a little bit. <laughs> wow. A 2.12, was that a, um, was that a reference to like, um, uranium or, a, or another radioactive element or something? Why they held it in a, anyway, when it comes to like, the moral of this, it's like, it seems to be, it seems to go in for, like, Lion King was like, uh, confronting the past and not running from it anymore. And this one seems to be that terrible things might happen in the, might happen in the past, but um, you can't dwell on it for too long if it stops you from uh, if it stops you from like uh, accomplishing things in life. Both of them are they're different in some ways, but are also a little bit similar. Oh no, he's got a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. Uh, boom. Oof. Yeah, with how much Lewis has been uh, pushed around by uh, everyone trying to adopt him and uh, all like his failures, I can see why he just... Uh, Give pack it up uh, just after about uh, one failure there. Oh, what are you doing with your leg? <laughs> wow, look at those legs. He's very flexible. <laughs> A dog. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what does that other one sound like, by the way, anyway? <laughs> and shove it right where? <laughs> Wait, you need to sing Hello My Baby, Hello My Honey. That's always a classic. Oh, that's nice. A spaghetti there. <laughs> wow, that's a very that's mostly the world's best pizza. Right. Yeah, it, it it seems to be like with all these uh, characters that they have going on, it seems to be a lot of a uh, a lot of these crazy things just going on in the background. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, making him eat himself. That's some someone's a uh, fetish. And I do like the designs for all of the uh, the characters and like everything going on. Uh, but a still don't... Oh, oh, he... No, he's a, he's a stunt man. Why does, she, why does she have a house for a head? Why does she have a house hat? Mm. 
Wait, everyone could just have um just have hair gel. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Now we just gone straight to throwing uh, meatballs at each other. Uh, all, all right. <laughs> I love I love a joke. The joke they have that um, the dubbing isn't 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 fitting of the match the lip movements there. Uh, how did how did we how did we get here? Just from just like shooting uh, meatballs at each other. Okay. <laughs> okay, so they just uh, shoot food at each other every single night. Oh, so it's just like one of uh, Lewis's old inventions. Oh, oh wow! It's turning into it's turning into a tomato. Uh, okay. Oh, I like those dinosaur, um, those dinosaur topiaries there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, is it because he's laughing too hard? Oh, that's a... That's a like vending machine with a fly spare. <laughs> Clever little idea there. Oh, <laughs> boy, his eyes are bugging out. Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh
And that's still something that I need to uh, to think about whenever I make a mistake. <laughs> Listen. Oh, this is gonna go well. Just get, just get a dinosaur. <laughs> oh, that looks, that looks a bit like um, you know um, the, ha the I've seen that Netflix series The House. That looks a bit like some a character like turn from that. That's a very strange way to toast. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, let's just kill him. And I like how, um, how it's like they're building up to like a while the bowler hat, <laughs> while the bowler hat guy is more uh, goofy. Doris is like just trying to go out to kill him. Oh god! Oh. I do like what, uh, you just shoot trains. <laughs> okay, that's something I didn't think I'd see today. A dinosaur running on a train up a hill. <laughs> this looks like something that you'd see, like in a... They'd see in like a Godzilla film, like a giant uh, octopus beating up a dinosaur like that. Wow, he's flexible. <laughs> That would make a good um. That make a good uh, like a superhero um in like one like a someone that's like My Hero Academia or something. Just like um, a superhero based around a pizza delivery person. Her. <laughs> that's that's a, a Tallulah. Just thinking about that's a very funny uh. <laughs> just that now one of those names that's always funny Tallulah. <laughs> I guess that's a, it's it's not him. I know it's not him, but that superhero guy, he always sounds like Patrick Warburton. <laughs> I like I like how awkward they're making it the the T Rex run, <laughs> and he can't reach. One of the boy, <laughs> the arms move. <laughs> That's a bit of a running joke with your schemes, isn't it? Just, I'm not sure if it, I have little arms. Maybe you need to get something like a, maybe you need to get like a an octopus or something. Oh wow, that's a that's a very strong shovel. <laughs> oh, nice shot. And it almost looks like uh, the mother T Rex from Dawn of the Dinosaurs. Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> Rib it. Okay, well, he's going down the river. He's going to get given cement shoes. Yeah. Oof.
Wow, it went sunset all of a sudden, didn't it? Oh. Well, right, the, the guy uh, lying down, the the big guy, and um, and to the guy with the puppies didn't really uh, add a whole lot to the fight, did they? Yeah, that's that's the thing. It feels like they've got too many characters to work with. I mean, all of them do have some pretty funny moments, but it just feels like some of the characters contribute more than others. Even as even as someone who um, likes creating characters and often has um, a lot of characters that he works with in his stories, it's just like for this one, it just feels like they don't have enough uh, screen time to flesh out uh, some of them. And still, why does that lady have a house for a head, a uh, hat? Yeah, some of his expressions there, he really does look a lot like a... Uh... Oh. Oof. And once again, I have to ask, if I don't have any blonde people in the future... Oh, is it, is it going to be, is it going to be something like, uh, they keep saying he has to go back to the, I, I don't remember everything about this, but, um, is it supposed to be that, <laughs> is it, is it supposed to be like a Lewis's, um, future self, um, is actually, uh, the dad in the family and, um, that's why they had, and that's why they had to take him back to the back to the past. And and I like that the like the family says that that he has to go back because they can't really drop that um they can't really drop that um truth on him because um that would affect uh, that would affect the future too much. You're grounded until you die. Uh, oh, considering what uh oh wow, that's a nice uh, I like that. That's what I need in my garden. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice, uh, topiary there. Oh, dear. Oh, that was echoing coming from that. Oh, okay. Oh, he's only got very sinister. Oh, no, he's pulling a Nightmare Before Christmas uh, lock, shock and barrel there. Oh, and this is where Bowler Hat Guy truly becomes sinister and proves that he's not just a uh, funny. Oh, that's a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting how the orphanage was never um, was never renovated. <laughs> I 
I like how they still... <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, where'd you get that, where'd you get that, cr that rope from? <laughs> Crossies, does it count? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I do like um, I do like the twists here. I do like the twists with this. <laughs> His face. Yeah, I do. I do like these twists. Uh, these, these are good plot twists here. And here. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Disney was doing villain twists long before Wreck It Ralph. I do. I do like uh, how all of the uh, all of the plot twists are done in this, and like how um, and how they work together. Oh. Wait, he has a cigar? That one boy had a cigar? That one man had a cigar? Oh, what? Aw. I like how they, um, how they had it so that the other kids actually wanted to hang out with him, but he was so... He was so absorbed by his hatred of a... Of a Lewis, hatred of Lewis, but he, he basically had him, um, basically had him, um, like a turn into this, uh, lanky, <laughs> weird man. But it's kind of true, it's like, uh, if he hadn't been kept up. With with a toilet paper. Playtime planet. <laughs> Helping hat. Ah, uh, she turns. Ah, uh, she turned into auto. Ugh. So Doris turned rogue. Ugh, that really does remind me of Auto. The eyes there. Eye there on a Doris. Ugh. Toilet paper. <laughs> and I do like how it's it's like obviously because he was stuck up in that um in that orphanage all his life, it's like it obviously left him a bit but dumb. <laughs> Wilbur, Wilbur, Wilbur. <laughs> well, what's, what's he just looking at the ceiling there? How many evil villains do you think? Ugh. 
Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, did you need to do that pelvic thrust? Uh, well, yeah, you didn't really keep a good uh, eye on him, did you? <laughs> oh, are you just going to throw yourself off like that? <laughs> yeah. Oh! Oh! Oh, God! Yeah, I have seen this film before, but that sudden jump to him getting his chest ripped out, that's still jarring. It's like... That's... That's almost like a jump scare. Just with that word. Jesus Christ. And with how everything suddenly goes downhill after this. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, at least uh, Kingpin likes it. I don't feel so good. Oof. Yep, things have suddenly gone very, very bad down, very downhill. Ugh. Yeah, it's, it's suddenly turned very, very creepy. Oh, this is pretty messed up that Doris is pretty much using goob this whole time. Yeah. Yeah, Doris is much more evil. Uh, never trust bowler hats. That's the, that's the message that we've learned from this. Never, uh, never, tr never trust bowler hats. <laughs> Keep moving forward and never trust bowler hats. Those are the morals from this. Yeah, yeah, this has gone pretty legitimately threatening here. And they just... They must be pretty strong. I mean, I know there's a lot of them, but that must be pretty strong for them to be able to punch a time machine, like a machine, big machine like that off the side there, like all together. Ugh. Oh, everything suddenly turned very, very gross. Welcome to Bowler Hatopolis. Oh, it turned into that one level from uh, Destroy All Humans, the Industrial Park. <laughs> I wonder if um, this has got anything... I wonder if Doris was secretly the head of a... Uh, was secretly the head of by and large the whole time, and that's how uh, Auto got to have that very, very red eye. 
and very messed up uh, ambitions. You didn't, though. Not yet. Oh. Now, now Doris doesn't feel so good. <laughs> I still think I still think that's a little bit of a um, a little bit of a strange thing. So he just says he's, you know, it's just like time travel plot. Uh, oh. No more bowler hats with the true impact he's had on the future is that bowler hats got outlawed. And I mean, the pacing for that bit with um, Doris just uh, taking over everything, it's a bit. I don't know, it, it just feels a little bit strange. Like uh, he says, I'm never going to invent you, and then. Um... Oh, he feels so good again. Oh, God, was that a groin shot? <laughs> oh, that, wow, he's got very stretchy cheeks. <laughs> I like how he turns that around on him. Oh, this is pretty sad for him, though, because uh, he manages to be both a comedically over-the-top villain and tragic at the same time. Like, he, he doesn't know what to do now, now that he knows that everything's, uh, everything was a lie. Doris was just using him the whole time. Oh. Scurvy. Well, you had that hat, so you could have uh, eaten that. Oh, yep. Yeah. There he is. Yep, yeah, there he is. Uh, he looks exactly like him. Older. Oh, I like that machine back there, that uh, big lava lamp. Beats that one I've got. Oh, no, and I like this. I really, I really like that touch, but... The one that he's proud of is the one where it all started, yeah.
Yeah, I, I do like it, like, when it comes to, like, stories, like, time travel stories, when you meet your future self, it's like, obviously there would be some kind of, like, a time paradox or trouble that would uh, happen, I would imagine, but I do, but I do like how um, his future self keeps it, uh, keeps it, uh, what, what was that about mashed potatoes? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I like the skinny, skinny limbs. Definitely more. Definitely got more reach. Anyway, when it comes to uh, uh, Lewis's future self, I do really like uh, the touch that um, it's like he keeps it vague, like saying it's up to you to see whether you want this to be your future and make the choices that you make. I do like that little touch. Yeah, yeah, I'm confused by that as well. Wow, like 15 years in the future and, that's, and they still have the same uh, car horns. Oh, oh, they kept the T-Rex there. Okay. You know, one thing I'm just thinking of, it's funny um, that Wilbur could have, um, if Wilbur had just closed that door, then everything could have changed. Oh, but I do like this bit, how Wilbur, um, he takes him back to possibly, possibly see his mom to make the choice about uh, what he wants to do. Yes, you'll go to see Mother Gothel. <laughs> maybe that's the reason why they decided not to. Um, <laughs> maybe this is like a crossover with a uh, Tangled, where uh, <coughs> sorry, where Mother Gothel uh, took um one of the time travel machines and decided to uh, go back in time to um. And I like how they handled this. Like, but it's interesting that they did keep it vague. Like, uh, they tried building it up. Like him seeing his mom, but it probably wouldn't change anything about what uh, what happened because, as they said earlier, it's like she probably she probably wouldn't be able to take care of him. Like that's the reason why he was uh, left at the orphanage to begin with, and that's why he makes that choice here. Oof. Oh wait, were there was that was that noise earlier? I don't remember that from the start of the film, but if so, that's a very good bit of foreshadowing. You can just hear that uh, that noise there, and then it's just um, and then that's why she ran off. May you never turn up with the Dursleys. Oh, and there it goes, full circle. One thing I've always wondered is, but I wonder if, like, in real-life cases where, like, parents unfortunately can't take care of their children, would they... Drop them off at orphanages in boxes like this. Uh, I'd imagine not, because that would be a very strange way to um, leave off a child there. I mean, if you can't take care of them, I mean, mm, I don't know. Oh, that's that's true. I mean, you do have a in the future, so. Uh -huh.
Oh, that's nice. How he, how he even state, how he even sellotaped together the his drawing for him. And I can see why of the why the memory thing uh, was like uh, his favorite invention. Not just because it's where it started, but also so um, like you can look to the past and keep and keep learning from it. Like learn from your mistakes. See you later, Dad. Ah. Oh, and oh, and I also like remember this. I really love this touch. That uh, at the end, they, they he goes back and he wakes up Goob, so they actually um, so he so he actually makes the catch, and uh, he wins the game. That was really that was really sweet that they included that. So he never has to turn into that crazy, uh, tight, spindly legged uh, bowler hat guy. <laughs> Oh, what, what's it? Just have a goth girl in the back. She was just grinning at it. <laughs> I like how the goth girl just still kept smiling at it in case everything's going to blow up again. Why does he wear his clothes the wrong way round anyway? Oh, and yet yeah, there she is, the the frog. Uh, you have a frog lady. I think that's another thing. Because they have, like, so many ca characters in this, I can't remember all of their names, unfortunately. Oh, is is that the? Oh, is that the is that the guy that um had a uh, Doris uh, take over his mind um earlier? No, oh, I like that he won that. Uh... Oh, I bet he's gonna get adopted by them. That's nice. How does he get his hair like that anyway? Just looking at that guy's uh, bud's hair just like that. <laughs> that that is a good steal. They've managed to buy that big observatory. You know, that big house there. There's a nice place that I've got together. But one thing I do think that it's a little bit strange, it's like he's seen his future self and they've all been able to and he's seen what he's done. But apart when it comes to things like this, I mean I imagine that he's doing it like organically, but sometimes I just might have a think, just like if you were to learn that you were destined to do something, would you really I mean, would you want to jump jump into it or would you try to see how different things would go? Hmm, it's just a bit of an interesting question there. Oh, I can see the Carl. Uh, 
Around here, however, we don't look backwards very long. We keep moving forward, opening up new doors and doing new things because we're curious, and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. Walt Disney! Ah, that's a, that's a nice uh, tribute there uh, that they had to uh, Walt there with a uh, uh, with that message at the end. Uh, once again, why did she have a house for a head? Uh, a hat. I keep saying that. Whoever, whoever she was. I'm sorry, I can't really, I can't really remember a name very well. Uh, that one there. Based on the book, A Day with Wilbur Robinson by a. Oh, it was Danny Elfman who did the music. No wonder it reminded me of him. It was him. Uh, we still we still haven't got anything to like flying cars yet. First Back to the Future had it and we don't have them yet. And now we're uh, meet the Robinsons as I uh, promised them. So uh, I hope that sometime within my lifetime we'll finally have flying cars because that'd be cool. <laughs> ah, OK. Uh, flying a uh, hot dog just going by. Sausage. Uh, that's one thing I remember. The when it comes to the T Rex, one thing I mainly remember is that um they had um that big head and little arms joke kept getting run into the ground a lot when um they were like uh, doing like all the trailers for it. It appeared in it appeared in every single trailer, and it was one of those ones that began to get a little bit um aggravating uh, when you see that same joke put in over and over and over and over again. I think. Okay, so that was uh, Meet the Robinsons, and I'm happy that I saw it again, because um, it's not my favourite, um, it's not one of my favourite Disney films, but I do remember, I do remember, it's one of those films that I did like it when I, when I first watched it, but I think as time goes on, I'm growing a little bit more appreciative of it, and uh, liking more of uh, what it does. Um Oh, Lewis had uh, two voice actors there. Tom Kenny was uh, Mr. Willerstein. Uh, because you watched Meet the Robinsons, uh, sorry, a, a recommendation just came up um, for on a uh, Chicken Little. No, thank you. Yeah, I do think my main uh, criticism for him. Um, oh, wow, is the bald hat guy's chin looks even more pronounced there. <laughs> One thing I do think is um, something that I do think is a bit a big criticism with it is that when it comes to stories that have like lots and lots of characters like um, like big families like a, and I think Encanto did it a little bit better. Uh, did, did it much better than this film does? Mainly because it starts off at, at the very beginning. They have like all these uh, family members and you get to know them a bit better. Here, it's not until. It's not until halfway through that um, the future family gets introduced. And unfortunately, um, many of them don't really get a big chance to, um, like, have their characters fleshed out or, uh, like, have know a lot more about them. Like, I still can't remember for the life of me why that one lady had um, a house for a hat. There, hat. I said it right this time. She had a house for a hat, not a head. And uh, you have the stuntman guy, the train lady, the guy who's married to the puppet, um... The one, the one lady just like flies through the air. It's like, unfortunately, I think it's because I can't remember very many of their names because, it, uh, and it's like, I feel that if you cut out some of them, I feel that like it would give a bit more time to uh, flesh out like uh, some of the other family members if you uh, got rid of uh, some of them. I mean, maybe they were in like the original story, so that's why they didn't want to cut them out. And not to say that there weren't funny moments with them, but I just feel like when it, it's a bit like quantity over quality. And as an example of something that I think does something like this a bit better, it's as well as uh, Encanto, it's like a... Uh... It's like a Dungan, the Dungan Romper series. Uh, that's uh, the prime example, I think, of like each game has like 16, 16 students in it. And it still gives you a lot of time. I mean, I mean, I know it's a video game, so it's a different, uh, so it's a different medium and it's a visual novel. So you would uh, 
have more of a chance to uh, flesh the characters out. But um, it is just something that I think is uh, notable um, in this. Uh, I mean, and it start introduced things like uh, the like the singing frogs, and not to say like creative and like cool ideas. Like I love um, a lot of the future aesthetics. But it's like other than Lewis Bod, yeah. Why was it? Why was Bod wearing his um? His shirt are wrong way around anyway. I guess he's just a kooky. And uh, the doctor lady. Um, I did like... Um... By the way, I did, I did like that. She was uh, she was married to um, Bud. And I mean, first time watching this, I actually didn't notice that um, they have the same facial features. But now I can see them again. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I think, my main uh, critique uh, when it comes to this. Just too, just a bit too many characters, and because of the pacing issues coming along, it doesn't allow you to uh, flesh out a lot of them. But I think Lewis, Wilbur, Goob, Bowler Hat Guy, uh, Bud, and uh, and uh, like uh, the other characters, um, the main characters, I think they're um, a lot of uh, a lot of fun. Um, and I did like. Um, and did like a lot of the performances that they gave. And of course, uh, if you couldn't tell from my uh, reaction, Bowler Hat Guy was definitely the funniest character in there. A lot of his, uh, a lot of his mannerisms and a lot of the way that he's animated, like in the over the top way, it really made me laugh. But I do like, um, I, I do think this is probably like one of the, I do really like how the film does like the plot twists when it comes to like uh, both uh, Goob's, um, identity and um how a lot of the events in the past like played out and i do like how they um even though some of the bits in the third act like when it comes to, like where doris came from and like uh i don't know it just seems a little bit it just seemed a little bit um it just seems a little bit strange like towards uh, the end like uh with a uh, doris like her uh, showing herself as a uh, the as a main villain felt a little bit um a little bit funny how they just jumped straight into like a bowler hat apocalypse but i did like uh, the story overall when it comes to things like that i, I don't know maybe um maybe it's because uh, a lot of the things is like a uh, time travel as well because uh, that could cause some uh, maybe some of some people who are more savvy with like a uh, time travel stories would uh, have picked up on uh, any plot holes here or anything to do with that but I, I thought it was fine i thought the story was fine just um just a few too many characters i think uh the animation it's like it's 2007 so um it's dated um a little bit from uh, when the film first came out but i still think it's i still think for the time and even for some uh, big big budget seemingly big budget films that have come out nowadays i still think it's still good animation Despite a few of like uh, the smoke effects seeming a little bit strange, I, th I think it was mainly the smoke that seemed uh, pretty, pretty weird. How they uh, did a lot of those effects, but hadn't the m the m computers for uh, the models and like uh, the effects to do with the uh, steam and a uh, smoke hadn't quite uh, been refined yet. I like the future aesthetic with uh, like the bubbles and like uh, the lighting effects. I really liked how they did that and how they managed a lot of those things. I think those were. Um, Really good little things where we did the animation, and of course the music was uh, a lot of fun as well. Of course, it's Danny Elfman, so um, I think a lot of it was a uh, was really a pr was really a pretty music. And uh, I've had a little bit of a think about um, the moral of the film. It's like the it's like the keep moving forward thing. It's like I know that I know that they're saying that. Um, I mean, it's like it's kind of like a uh, the Lion King's moral, but I think like um kind of coming from the opposite direction, if you know what I mean. But it still kind it still works, I think, because Lion King was you can you can either run from the past or you can learn from it. So the past can hurt, but if you learn from it, then everything's um okay. And and of course, it's a uh, kicking into the ground what that stupid Hakuna Matata thing did. Yeah, controversial opinion. I don't think Hakuna Matata's it means no worries and just being a deadbeat for your whole life and never taking responsibility for your actions that's uh some i don't like you and very much uh, a bit of a hot take uh anyway but and when it comes to the lion king it's like keep a hold of the past and learn from it well this film is like trying to go for like um it's like it's okay to fail in the past but you can't let a bad past keep you keep you held down and you can still like uh, move forward and improve your future from it i think i think that's kind of a i still think they're not exactly they're not really like a uh, at odds with each other it's like one of them says they're both kind of like a uh, learning from the past and uh 
it's like this film is more like a not letting the past define you and uh, if you if you take it on board you can you like take your failures on board then it's okay to fail unless you, if you don't st- unless, as long as you don't keep stop trying it's okay to fail as long as you don't stop trying and uh, if you succeeded at everything that would be boring that's something that i think um something that I really as that really um resonates with me when it comes to my uh, life experiences and but even if I did like a beat it into the ground a little bit when it came to um the moral it's like over and over again they have a characters constantly saying it over and over again so I can see why some people would find it a little bit um like they're beating the message into your head a bit too much but I, th- I think it's like building from your failures and uh making it making yourself better from it like keep on doing it i think i think that's what that that's how it goes so yeah i think this and the that lion king moral i think they're both uh they're both they're both a little bit different but they're similar in a way i think and i do really like uh, how they handled uh that moral and uh everything going on uh with with uh lewis uh or cornelius uh learning to uh learning that to stop her dwelling too much on the past. I think it's like, don't dwell on the past too much to the fact that you don't care about what the future will have in front, the future of your life will have in front of you. I think that's what uh, may more of how I take it. How more, how I take that moral there. And I think that's a, and I think that's a good one. I do really, uh, I do really like that moral. So yeah, as I said, it's not my absolute favorite, um, Disney film, but it is still one that I am really, really happy that I decided to uh, sit down and uh, watch again. And um, I hope you enjoyed listening to my uh, live reaction of the film. It's not, it's not perfect, but uh, then again, it's uh, still compared to uh, the what definitely compared to Chicken Little and the Wild that came before it. It's a definite, a definite improvement. And in a way, it could, and uh, if it wasn't for this, it wouldn't have uh, paved way for like a Bolt or uh, any of the future of Disney films that came out uh, after this one. And it does seem to be, especially considering that it came out uh, relatively recently, it's only something like a, God, 15 years old. This film is 15 years, wow, now I feel old. It's it's one that slips under the radar a little bit, I think, but it's still one that um I, I do recommend watching if even if it does have uh, some flaws uh, that uh, that I feel would be a uh, would be something that do he- does held it back from being a uh, one that I consider my absolute favourite. It is still good. It is still worth uh, watching, and it is still a, a nice, entertaining, uh, and it is still a fun, entertaining film. And I'm re- and I had a lot of fun. So, what's my next uh, live reaction that I will be uh, reacting to? Looking at uh, my list of um, results that are from my polls that I have here, I think my next reaction is going to be for a film that I haven't seen before, and it's another one that I've had a lot of people uh, recommend to me um, a few times recently, and it is the and it is the animated adaptation of Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. And funnily enough, this is what I have read of uh, some of the Windsor McKay comics uh, for this one, so I do have some. Um, knowledge of um the source material so i'm interested to see how this one will uh will compare to it and uh how how i will think about uh, this film because i feel like some people i have heard from some people that they consider this film like um, a guilty pleasure in ways but i have seen some little bits of like uh, the animation and on um, in the past and uh, i am a little bit aware about uh, the source material so i shall be uh, watching that uh, next time hopefully uh, next week i'll be um sitting down and i'll be recording my live reaction to that so i shall uh, see you all later everybody when i uh, record my next uh, live reaction ducky worth out bye everyone <laughs>